What's even better is because it's doing this force automatically, we don't need return air wet bulb, outdoor dryable, we don't need this chart, we don't have to worry about that at all. This meter device is automatically controlling it. Now that we know the basics about our thermostatic expansion valve and how to see if we have enough subcooled liquid feeding it, we need to see if we can measure our superheat versus target superheat. We want to make sure he's actually doing his job. We're paying him enough, giving him enough airflow, he should do his job for us. We don't want to assume, we want to follow up and check to make sure that's happening. So what we're going to need to know is a target superheat, what it's aiming for, what it wants it to be at. That varies greatly by different manufacturers. It can be as low as 8 degrees Fahrenheit, or I've even seen them as high as 18 degrees Fahrenheit. That's quite a swing on superheat. So it depends on the manufacturer. Now, a lot of these TXVs are adjustable. I am not going to talk about adjusting a TXV this early on because notoriously new techs try to adjust a TXV when there's nothing wrong with the settings of the old one. So there's a lot more to take in before we get to actually adjusting them, but some TXVs you can adjust and set it at what you want it to be. We're going to go with our manufacturer's instructions because they've specifically specified what they want. This manufacturer said they want an 8 degree Fahrenheit of superheat. That makes it very easy for us. They want an 8 degree superheat. So we know that our target for this manufacturer of this brand, which I won't say who it is, they want an 8 degree Fahrenheit target superheat. That's target, what we want to be it. What we're aiming for, the speed limit if you will. Now we need to look and see what we're actually getting. So we're going to use our formula that we've used before. So our formula says our actual suction line temperature. So I put my thermometer on the suction line. I can put it right here in the suction line and get the actual suction line temperature. And let's say that temperature comes out to be, we'll use 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So the actual suction line temperature is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we take our suction gauge, PSIG converted to saturated temperature. So we get that saturated temperature, we write that in our formula. Let's say that number came out to be 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So 50 actual suction line temperature minus 42 suction saturated temperature gives us a superheated vapor of 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Well our superheat is 8 degrees and our target is 8 degrees, we're right on the money. We know that we're feeding in enough subcooled liquid. We know that we have eight degrees of superheat and our target's eight degrees of superheat. That's called a balanced charge. Everything is good. Life is happy. Everybody is, but it's not always like that. So that's will give us some other examples of what we might see. Let's say that our suction line temperature was a different number. Let's say our suction line temperature was 62 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we take our PSIG and convert it to temperature, it's still at 42. But if we take our actual suction line temperature, it rose to 62. Well, if we take actual suction line temperature, 62, minus our suction saturated temperature of 42, we end up with a superheated vapor of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's outside of any of our range. So our superheat comes out to be 20 degrees Fahrenheit, actual. That's much higher than our target of eight. This is called high superheat, high superheated vapor. High superheated vapor. So let's take a look on our cup idea again. Let's say we're talking about vapor, which is the opposite. Let's say I want eight degrees of superheated vapor. But when we do the measurements, I have 20 degrees of superheated vapor. So I can only see the vapor and I want this much vapor, but I have that much vapor. That means I don't have enough liquid in here. So I want eight degrees of superheat, but I have 20 degrees of superheat I have high superheated vapor. That means I have a starved evaporator. So we're gonna make a note here. High superheated vapor equals a starved evaporator. Let's do another option. So we're doing our superheat measurements. We get our actual suction line temperature from the actual suction line that we can actually touch. We get that temperature and that temperature 43 degrees Fahrenheit. 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Actual suction line temperature. We get our suction saturated. PSIG converted temperature, and that saturated temperature comes up to be 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So 43 minus 42 equals one degree of superheated vapor. So our actual superheat is now one. We still want eight, but we're at one. We're very close to getting liquid back to our compressor. And that's assuming that all of your instruments are right on the money. We have a danger zone of getting liquid refrigerant to our vapor pump. That's a huge issue. But we're also very low. We're under 
the superheat target. We're too low. So we have low amount of superheated vapor. So this is going to call low superheat vapor. So if we think about our superheat vapor, we want eight degrees of superheated vapor. Want eight degrees of superheated vapor, but only have one degree of superheated vapor. That means I've flooded, I've overfilled my evaporator. I'm about to overflow and get liquid into my compressor. We don't want liquid in our vapor pump. So that's gonna be a huge issue. So low superheated vapor means a flooded evaporator. Low superheated vapor, flooded evaporator. Too much refrigerant inside of that evaporator. So these are things that's important. So we wanna make sure we do subcooling, but we also wanna look at superheat. Is our evaporator flooded, starved, or okay? Is my condensing unit flooded, starved, or okay? It's important to look at the whole picture. Now, airflow is a big key to this. We're gonna be getting there soon, but first I want you thinking about the refrigeration cycle. 